Would you perhaps just like to um, explain a bit about natural theology, first of all? Yes. Um, the point about natural theology, the natu natural part of it, the reference to nature, is the source of your knowledge. Um, and this is theological knowledge, knowledge about God, about humans' relation with God, um, that derives from the exercise of natural reason without reference to revelation. That means without reading your Bible, without hearing a prophecy or seeing a miracle. So um, one form of natural theology that's been very important historically in relation to science is the design argument. The idea that when you see design in nature, you can mm -hmm. infer from that design the existence and attributes of a god. And it was William Paley who wrote a, a, a book called Natural Theology. Was he one of the first natural theologians? He, he wasn't one of the first. The tradition became very strong in Britain in the 17th century. Um, but Paley's Natural Theology, which was written, or rather published in 1802, has come to be um, iconic. It's mm -hmm. come to be recognised as one of the classic statements of the argument, partly because it's just so wonderful a read. It reads very, very easily. It starts with a simple analogy between uh, a watch and a natural phenomena. If one were to encounter a watch, one would infer from the design exhibited by the watch that it must have been made by a watchmaker. Similarly, the argument goes, if one encounters design in the natural world, one must infer that there is a divine designer for the natural world. And Paley sets out the argument very simply and then proceeds to give example after example. He says at the outset, the argument is cumulative and Boy, is it cumulative. <laughs> Your seminar focuses a lot on the Bridgewater treatises. Would you like to say a bit about them and perhaps how they differ from Paley's views? Yes, well, um, I have a sense that people think that, that, that Paley's natural theology is really um, typical of natural theology in the period before the publication of Darwin's Origin of Species. And this comes in part from the juxtaposition which Richard Dawkins gives mm -hmm. in his book, The Blind Watchmaker, where one uh, finds Paley's vision of um, the creation juxtaposed with uh, Darwin's. Um, the Bridgewater treatises were published in the 1830s, written by eight leading men of science who'd been appointed by the president of the Royal Society and the Archbishop of Canterbury. Um, and they were written on the power, goodness and wisdom of God as manifested in the creation. But the kinds of theologies that they developed were really quite different in many ways from Paley's. Um, they showed important departures from Paley's um, and they help us to understand some of the distance bridged between uh, Paley's views and those of, of Darwin's because the, the views outlined in the Bridgewater treatises were much closer to Darwin's. Firstly, um, one would want to emphasize that in the Bridgewater treatises creation has been historicized for for Paley, creation is static, but for the Bridgewater treatises, creation is a process which has taken place over, as one of the authors puts it, millions of millions of years. Is that through some sort of geological sort of processes and things, discoveries that have been made? Indeed, a huge, geology. huge breakthroughs in, in geology in this period, yeah. um, and um, the author of the ge geological Bridgewater treatise, William Buckland, who is the Oxford reader of geology and mineralogy, um, is one of the leaders of um, British geology um, and in his Bridgewater treatise he gives uh, one of the best expositions of the new synthesis of progressive geology, seeing the process by which the earth has come to be as it is now as, as being natural, law-like um, and taking place over a very extended period of time. This idea of natural laws, this was also a new thing rather than sort of God intervening miraculously in nature. Yes, in, in, the 17, in 17th century natural theologies you find uh, an emphasis, uh, often quite a strong emphasis on um, natural law. But in Paley, natural law is uh, largely absent. It, it makes only a very brief appearance. 
Uh, for the authors of the Bridgewater Treatises, um, one of the distinctive characters of early 19th century science is that it's becoming ever more law-like. Um, and they want, to, in their books, to interpret this for a wider Christian public. How can this law-like vision of nature be reconciled with orthodox Christianity? Mm -hmm. And the authors are quite convinced that it can. They're quite prepared, for instance, to consider the history of um, the earth as being law-like. In the case of William Hewell, the uh, Cambridge uh, polymath, a man of science, um, he's quite prepared to uh, accept the possibility that the, um, the solar system might, as the French physicist uh, Pierre Simon Laplace suggested, might have condensed from nebulous matter um, into, um, in, into the, uh, the planetary uh, objects mm -hmm. and the, and the, the sun. Um, and he's quite prepared to see this law-like process as being consistent with divine creation. So when Darwin wrote The Origin of Species, was he sort of carrying on where Bridgewater Treatises left off? It's important, to, it's important to state that um, the Bridgewater authors were, to a man, um, opposed to the notion that new species might have appeared according to uh, natural law. Mm -hmm. um, that having been said, in many other ways, Darwin was building upon the notion of creation by law. Indeed, in the 1830s, when he's writing his transmutation notebooks, this is the view that he's quite prepared to endorse. Um, and by the 1840s, the kind of perspectives that are given in the Bridgewater Treatises have been pulled together into a much larger evolutionary synthesis in the famous evolutionary book, Vestiges of the Natural History of Creation. Um, so, so that by the time Darwin publishes in the late 50s, this perspective, the notion that God is acting according to natural laws and that this um, is not inconsistent with uh, Christianity, mm -hmm. is widely um, diffused through mm -hmm. the British mm -hmm. pop population.